small one, but now I'm scared. I kind of looked at the bio of this guy and, you know, it's like this, is it uh, almost like serial entrepreneur stuff, like uh, founding several companies, they get bought out, you start a new one and uh, very, very interesting stuff in there. So I'm really looking forward to this talk um, about continuous um, deployment and uh, I'll just hand over the stage to him. Okay, thank you very much. Please give a warm welcome to Alon. So I'll start with uh, introducing myself, uh, Alon Eiselman. Uh, I did uh, three startups. Uh, first one was acquired by uh, Mercury Interactive, then uh, joined Mercury Interactive, and uh, we built uh, Topaz back then. We built uh, Topaz, now it's uh, the HP back system. Uh, then I started another one, uh, sold it to uh, BA, uh, which is now part of uh, uh, that's the technology part of uh, WebLogic. And then uh, started uh, uh, Nolio in 2006, end of 2006. Um, and uh, we sold it uh, like six months ago to CA. So now uh, part of, uh, of uh, CA in the past uh, six months and uh, uh, serving as a VP strategy in uh, in the application delivery unit. So what I'm going to talk about is not uh, you know really uh, how you develop is uh, what the organization is uh, doing with uh, your staff. And um, feel free to interrupt me you know during uh, my session. So uh, just to just to uh, focus you know where uh, what we did in Nolio. Uh, is uh, fitting in uh, in uh, this application delivery uh, unit of uh, CA. So we have these uh, four Cs. First one, first one is uh, service virtualization. It's basically if you develop something, it's not ready. Uh, we know how to uh, virtualize it, the service itself, and use it at the time that you develop it. So uh, the organization will be able to start really uh, uh, testing the, the entire application while you're developing it. And then, and then later on, you know, we have this uh, continuous application delivery uh, where stuff is ready and you need to start deploying it into the various uh, different environments and, uh, well, up to, up to production. But the way we, uh, we, we need to do it, or the organization need to do it, is as fast as possible. And today, you know, if we are talking about uh, quite large organizations, it takes weeks and sometimes, you know, months for, you know, your code to get into production. So what we are doing is minimizing this time to be even, you know, on the same day. And we have very nice examples of very large, you know, banks that or organizations that uh, they are, you know, developers are releasing something, the same thing that they are release, the releasing is ready to go into production on the same day. Uh, then, you know, we have uh, uh, the next thing is the monitoring, and then the other uh, in the bottom is the way that we can feed back, you know, the information from production back into, you know, service virtualization. So next time that we virtualize things, it will be much similar to the way it's used in production. So talking about innovation is what you develop is, you know, at the end, the end goal is that it will provide some business value. Means that it would go from dev up uh, to the right, you know, to get into, into production. So the organiza organizations, uh, they, they really like, they really need to be more innovative to uh, work much quicker and to reduce cost. And that's uh, basically 
why they start using, many organizations start using agile development to make it really uh, go faster in development, doing some test automation, again, to make it, uh, you know, going uh, much faster together, you know, continuous integration. And then on the other side, you know, use more virtualization, uh, provisioning uh, the, the hardware automatically, and uh, doing many things, you know, that can make things much faster. But today, you know, if, if you don't do automation, it takes days and weeks, sometimes, you know, I see uh, months to take something to up to the, to the right, you know, to go into, into production. It has many uh, errors, you know, releasing it into many different environments. It takes a long time and the cost is very high. So talking about continuous delivery, the, the main, you know, the main thing in continuous delivery is to uh, make the whole cycle becomes, you know, instead of months or weeks, uh, becomes, you know, minutes. And that's uh, the example I, I talked uh, before is, you know, one, uh, it's, it's a very large bank in, in Europe. Uh, before we started uh, the project in, in that bank, they used to release uh, any, any feature that they develop. Better? Okay. So uh, it took them, took them something like, uh, like uh, two months and they did something like, uh, say, uh, in, in their internet bank, they did something like uh, um, up to 10 releases uh, a month uh, in any you know, given environment. Uh, they now do around 3,000 releases uh, a month. And that's basically boosting the whole organization. And any feature that any developer is basically uh, releasing or checking in uh, in, in their development uh, group is starting a cycle of uh, a build. The build is done automatically. It's then triggering uh, Nolio to start running deployments, so deploying uh, development, running the test, checking the results. Uh, if it's all okay, then proceeding, promoting automatically to the next uh, environments and doing this uh, automatically as well. So the whole cycle is done now in 20 minutes. So basically 20 minutes after the developer was checking out, checking in uh, his code, it, it was actually ready to go into production. So someone in, in management can decide, you know, after 20 minutes, if you uh, put it or click another button and put it into production. So Talking about you know the different maturity level and how do we do that uh, when we start a project? So most of the organizations when we start uh, dealing with them, they are in level one or level two. So they do many things manually. So they take your code and manually deploy them in any given you know different uh, environments up to production. Uh, some of them are creating some scripting. In some cases, you know, the developers themselves are creating the scripts to deploy their code and, uh, and doing it semi-automatically, deploying uh, uh, the different environments uh, with scripting, uh, but it's not scalable enough. So the next thing that we do, we automate the deployments themselves. So uh, the deployments in any given environment is done automatically. So clicking a button and everything is deployed, all the different tiers, uh, web servers, app servers, DB uh, is done automatically. Yes. Yeah, good question. So uh, automation. So I'm talking about the platform that we built in Olio. Is it's not basically doing scripting. So it's you know, let's say you develop the script to do uh, the, your web server deployment automatically. And then you build another script and another SQL to do your database and your app servers. But at the end, you need to run everything synchronized in a synchronized way to deploy, uh, you know, your application. So, you know, every, every given component, it's not, you know, living by its own. So at the end, it needs to be synchronized. And what we do is taking all the different pieces from all the different components and run them in the right way, in the right sequence, synchronized way. Uh, with all the different operations, right data, and I'm going to talk about this. You know, how do we do that?
So that's basically the, the difference. Um, while you, know, you did the automation and you have one click to deploy your entire application, then it, we take it to the next level, which is continuous delivery, and that's what I was talking about. You know, a developer is checking in a code, and that's starting a series of operations that running the deployments and testing and everything in every different environment automatically. So talking about the automation itself, so what, what, what does it mean? So uh, when you know, we do a release, we have artifacts, you know, any JAR files, ear files, WAR files, whatever you, know, you need to or you produce, and you know, someone needs to take it and to deploy it somewhere. The next thing is, you know, how to deploy it. So sometimes you send, you know, the developers themselves are building the, the documents. Sometimes it, it's not even documents, uh, even, you know, talking to the operation guys, explaining them that's how you do it. But there are some instructions of how to take those uh, artifacts and deploy them. And in, in many cases, you know, when you deploy them in different uh, environments, you do it differently, you know. You, you deploy development and test differently than you deploy integration and, uh, and production. So there are some instructions of how to do it in different environments, and there are some inputs. So inputs that you, that, you know, developers, they don't know. In some cases, or in most cases, the operation guys, they know the answers of, you know, what should be entered in, in you know, what stage in order to deploy it successfully. So when we automate this, we integrate automatically into the repositories, you know, subversion Git, you know, whatever, uh, TFS, anything that in the organization, and we know how to take all the artifacts automatically based on the output of a release. Uh, the output of the release is basically and being input, you know, into the system in, you know, a manifest file, XML file that basically tells us everything that we need to know how to deploy it. And we build, and that's our platform, we build uh, the automation or the model for the automation. And that basically, that's the processes that defining how to deploy the entire application with all the different tiers. And then we take it to any given environment. So one process uh, with different sets of input files and different repositories, we know how to take it into the, uh, you know, the different environments. So now going into level four, which is you know continuous uh, delivery, um, then you know we have the build uh, server, and the developer is checking in a code that a code that's triggering basically a build. At the end of the build, the outcome of the build is added into the repository that can be you know uh, hats on uh, you know. Uh, Git, subversion, whatever, you know, repository you are using. Um, and then we have uh, Nolio, or you know, we call it uh, CA Lisa release automation in the middle that is being triggered uh, and then uh, run the deployment, let's say in dev, activating the test, checking the results, and if it's okay, continue and do the deployment in test uh, UAT, production, whatever environments you have. But the whole promotion and the whole cycle is done automatically. The more you go into production, there are additional uh, services that you know, we need to integrate with. You know, like if you have some batches running in, in production, we need to uh, make sure that those batches are not running at the same time uh, that the, the deployment is being done. So that's basically simulating what we described you know, in pre-production. Uh, the deployment is done into dev, the test is running, let's say, you know, Selenium is running, uh, running the test, we check the results, if the result's okay, we take the artifacts again, and we deploy the next environment, activating the test, checking the results, if it's okay, we did, you know, pre-production, then we go into production, we do the same, deploying uh, uh, staging and production, for example, but also, you know, synchronizing with some change management tools, batch, you know, servers, whatever. Benefits, you know, we uh, improve uh, the business productivity. Uh, you know, if the organization itself can reduce 
the time it takes uh, to deploy any given code, you know, and the more you go into Agile, the more, you know, it's smaller and smaller, then you have more and more releases, so the faster the organization is doing it, it's becoming more innovative, more competitive in the market, you know, and basically reducing the time to market, and that's, that's the big money, you know, if, uh, Usually, you know, in the past, we used to calculate, you know, the ROIs of uh, adding automation with the time that we save the operation guys uh, to do those many, many deployments. But the real, re the real, real value is, you know, when the, ve when the organization itself is improving its efficiency and being able to release things, you know, faster than the other organizations, then it can, you know, win, win you know, more portion of the market. Uh, all, all releases are fully uh, automated, so that's basically uh, reducing the risk. No one is involved. You know, the, the example I described, no one is involved. The feature is going by itself, you know, up to production and waiting to go into production, and then when it goes into production, then it's another click. Uh, improving the operational productivity, that's basically reducing the cost and the time to resolution. So if you need to fix something, the fix goes into production much faster. Uh, standardization, everything basically uh, is less complex, you know, the deployment itself is much more visible and, and clear, and the promotion is done also automatically, and that's basically reducing the idle times between, you know, the different deployments. And let's say, you know, you release something and it goes into, let's say it passed your test in dev environment, and then you, it's ready to go into a uh, test into QA, then the QA guys, you know, may start running the deployments the next day. And then they spend a day in, in the deployment and they start the testing on the, ne on the next day. So you're spending a lot of time by running in between the different stages. When it's done automatically, that time is basically uh, eliminated. So examples, you know, from different customers, uh, in most cases, we reduce uh, the time of releasing from days, months, weeks, you know, uh, to minutes. Thank you. Any additional questions? So the question was uh, if it's based on automatic testing or if our customers are doing So, so uh, you can build your uh, automation in a way that uh, whatever is ready uh, is being activated automatically and the results are being, test, uh, being checked automatically. The rest uh, is done manually, then you know, your process is running up to a point, then it's uh, raising uh, you know, some pop-ups and saying, you know, now you need to run your test, let us know when, you can uh, you know, when we can proceed. Yes, yes, because, you know, in most cases, not everything is being, uh, is ready before, you know, when we start, uh, but it's a process. And the more you have, uh, you know, uh, testing automation, then you can run really faster. If you have a complete, you know, suite of, uh, of automatic testing, then it's, it can even, you know, promote automatically, and it doesn't even need to wait, you know, for uh, any input from, uh, from the, the, the QA guys or operation guys. Any additional questions? Thank you.